Hello from London and it's Thoughts on Thursday and this is the second in a mini-series where we're going into a deep dive on the pros and cons of translation as a language learning method. And today I want to give you some practical ideas as to how you can use translation. Welcome, if you're new here, I'm Dr Gareth Popkins and here we talk about language learning from many angles. My own language learning projects, methods, reviews, inspiring interviews and a bit of language vlogging. If you haven't yet subscribed for the vibe, well, please do and you can get my free Language Learner Pro video training by following the link underneath this video. Now, in first in series, I looked at the pros and cons of translation. I said, yes, translation had a bad rap because it had been used very unimaginatively and it had left people who had traditionally just translated from Latin and Greek and then modern languages into English, winding up in places like France and Germany, unable to speak the language. It can also take time away from actually getting a lot of input and writing practice. But I said that wasn't the whole story. The fact that you can't understand the spoken language or speak the language is not due to translation. It's because you haven't been getting enough practice at those skills. And that translation could actually be really useful because there's nowhere to hide when you're trying to translate. It really puts a spotlight on your comprehension and on your expressive abilities. It also, when you get it wrong in particular, helps you to notice and remember words, phrases and stylistic aspects of the language. And also it's a useful thing to be able to do in its own right as a sort of fifth skill, cultural mediation. You might actually be asked to translate when you're travelling with a group of friends, for example. That would be interpretation, perhaps, or you might be translating a bus timetable or something like that. So it can actually be a useful skill in its own right. But something else, you know, translation can actually be fun. It's like solving a puzzle. It's like a Rubik's cube if, cube, if you like. And so I think if you're that sort of person, that's another good argument in favour of translation. So what are some actual ideas for using translation? One of the key questions which people always ask me is, should I be translating from the target language into English or from English into the target language? And the answer, I think, is both. So if you're translating from the target language into English, in much the way people used to do with Latin and Greek and in the old-fashioned grammar translation method, what you're doing is decoding the language. In that sense, it's the same as when you're reading or listening when you haven't got good enough to understand everything in the language. So you're actually, though, really having your comprehension very, very mercilessly tested with translation. Whereas if you're listening or reading, you can rely on context or the general gist, perhaps, to carry you through. That won't work when faced with a phrase, the precise meaning of which you have got to render different though it will be, it's not, as we saw in the first video, a direct mapping, a direct word for word, one for one, but you have to really understand the, the, uh, f the target language, that's to say the foreign language, before you can translate back into English. So there's a great argument for translating from the foreign language into English. There's very definitely also a place for translating from English into the target language. This we call recoding, and it's the same in a sense to speaking or writing, in that you're having to produce convincing, correct, idiomatic language. Now, you might not have much success in this, and most professional translators actually and interpreters tend to work into their native language because it's so difficult to get it absolutely perfect in the foreign language. But we are not about that necessarily. We're just about practicing vocabulary and basic structures and higher up the scale, fine tuning. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it's an extremely good exercise. It's an extremely good way to get you noticing words and structures that you are not on top of yet. So, how could you get translating both ways? Well, you can do it with one text. You can take a text in the foreign language, you can translate it into English, and then you can translate it back into the original language and compare the two. Now, the results will be, of course, different. You won't get exactly the same translation, probably, and this is not a test of memory at the end of the day. But the results, particularly if you talk them through with a teacher, may also be instructive. 
You may get it right, but just say things in a different way, or there may be mistakes and weaknesses being thrown up. But it's a way of getting maximum interaction, isn't it, if you've translated into English and then you translate back again. Let's call it sort of a wraparound stereo translation exercise. What are you actually going to translate? I think it's really important that you choose a relevant text. Now, relevancy in this context, I think, has two meanings. First of all, something that's at your level. And secondly, something that feels interesting and important to you. Otherwise, you're perhaps going to lose motivation. Now, in the earlier stages, what you're translating is probably going to be an adapted text, maybe from the textbooks or the materials that you find interesting that you're working with. Whereas, as you get into the upper intermediate and advanced levels, of course, you'll be much freer in what you can cho choose to translate. So try and find a relevant text for the exercise. Don't choose a text that's too long either, because translation can actually take a lot longer than you might think. Also, use translation as part of a spaced recall plan. What do I mean by space recall? Well, we can remember things much better often if we recall them at intervals, and that those intervals then can get longer and longer. So we may learn something, and then we should go back to it the next day, in three days' time, a week's time, two weeks' time, a month's time, and so on. Translation can be a way of returning to a text several times to get the space recall effect. This could actually work really well with the two-way translation method I discussed earlier on, and you could build on it further by beginning with a text as a reading exercise, so you can process the text, get a sense of the meaning, focus in on the vocabulary and some of the phrases on the first encounter with the text. And then a the second time, the following day or a couple of days later, you could translate it into English. And then after a further interval, you could translate it back into the target language. And then after a bit more of an interval, maybe go back to it to your teacher, if you're doing one-to-one -one lessons, for example, for discussion or a correction, corrective feedback on the translation that you've done. So that's a way to build uh, translation into a space recall program, uh, a way of helping you to reinforce and remember words and structures in the language. Those then are some ways to use translation, whether you're a beginner, intermediate or an advanced language learner. And in the final video in this series, I'm going then to focus in at each of those three levels with some bespoke ideas for using translation. A final thing today, don't overdo it with translation. It is an additional tool, but you want to be spending the bulk of your time, I think, getting practice with the four key skills. It's never going to replace writing with good corrective feedback, lots and lots of reading and listening input, and of course, speaking practice. But yes, I do think it's got a role to play. Have you been using translation in the ways that I've described? Or are there other ways that I haven't mentioned that you think we need to know about? Well, do let me know in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope to see you in the next video in this series. And don't forget, as always, to subscribe for the vibe if you haven't done yet. Throw me a thumbs up, tickle that bell, and share the effect. See you next time.